I think I speak for everyone when I say that Plague of Madness, the primal episode that came out April Fool's 2020, was one of the best things I've seen in a very long time. And in a time when people, once again, are enthralled and mystified by zombies and viruses because of the relevancy in 2020, it makes sense to be agog, to witness decaying prehistoric flesh on screen. That being said, there are a lot of questions about the episode, and one such question was also asked by another watcher, which we're all wondering as well. How did the Parasaurolophus that infected the Camarasaurus get infected himself? When we first see a sign of an infected individual is when a small herbivore dinosaur comes leaping from out of the trees behaving like a rabid beast. Little plant-eating Cujo decides to dip his mouth into the carnivore diet by taking a literal chunk out of the sauropod's leg. It doesn't take very long at all for the poor long neck, who I nicknamed Toothfoot, to become infected. How did the Parasaurolophus become infected? Did the sickness start with him or were there others? How did it start? What is it? how this disease even came about, we have to pinpoint exactly what it is. As I somewhat mentioned in our video titled, Was Primal Plague of Madness Canon? There are different methods in which an illness like this can be brought about. Some of the real world zombie examples I gave included a type of fungus, a parasite, or just a horrible genetic mutation. In the case of chronic wasting disease that is found in cervids like moose, elk, and white-tailed deer, this disease causes the deer to exhibit zombie-like traits. Chronic wasting disease is caused by prions, misfolded proteins with the ability to transmit their misfolded shape onto normal variants of the same protein. They characterize several fatal and transmissible neurodegenerative diseases in humans and many other animals, which translates to they make you look like the freaking walking dead. It can take years for a host that has this issue to exhibit the signs, but you get the idea that a creature might have it when they start losing a crap ton of weight, they start exhibiting strange behavior, like a change in their behavior. They become less socially interactive, isolating themselves from other animals, not being aware of their surroundings, and suddenly not being afraid of things they normally should be afraid of. Animals that are diseased may exhibit increased drinking, urination, and excessive salivation, which is exactly what we saw in Plague of Madness. The reason for this is because the disease ends up eating holes in the brain and affecting the spinal cord and other tissues of the infected animal, poor things. What is interesting about chronic wasting disease is that it's very contagious among the creatures that can get it. Animals that share enough DNA, for example, in deer and elk can successfully transmit the disease to each other and it can spread very quickly. Experts also believe that chronic wasting disease prions can remain in the environment for a very long time. So that means if an infected animal dies from the disease, long after those dudes are dead, other animals in the surrounding area can still contract it. At the moment of this video, humans and other four-legged livestock like cows cannot get it from deer. Now of the other zombie issues I mentioned in the video I did prior to this one, I feel like this illness fits mostly with what we saw in Plague of Madness. That Primal episode that got everyone talking about the show Primal and that made fans of the franchise more loyal than they already were. Listen to the description of CWD, or Chronic Wasting Disease, and the symptoms in more detail and tell me if this doesn't remind you of what happened to the Camarasaurus and the Parasaurolophus in Plague of Madness. Most cases of CWD occur in adult animals. The youngest animal to exhibit clinical symptoms of the disease was 15 months. The disease is progressive and always fatal. The first signs are difficulties in movement. The most obvious and consistent clinical sign of CWD is weight loss over time. Behavioral changes also occur in the majority of cases, including decreased interactions with other animals. Listlessness, lowering of the head, tremors, repetitive walking and set patterns, and nervousness. Excessive salivation and grinding of the teeth are also observed. Most deer show increased drinking and urination. The increased drinking and salivation may contribute to the spread of the disease. Loss of fear of humans and appearance of confusion are also common. And then a scientist summed it up as being behavioral changes, emaciation, weakness, ataxia, salivation, aspiration, pneumonia, and progressive death. Now, most of these seem to fit the disease that we've seen in Primal, with one very obvious exception, though. Chronic wasting disease does not cause aggression or for the animals to go stark raving mad. 
The episode is called Plague of Madness. Even when you consider the other forms of natural zombies, such as the ant and fungus and the wasp that lays her larva inside of the caterpillar, those poor souls are directly taken over by an entity, whether it had been the wasp hijacking the caterpillar to behave a certain way due to chemicals or whatnot, or the ant being taken over by the fungus, which instructed it or changed its behavior to cause it to go to the tip top parts of the canopy so it can die and have the fungus spread all over over its community. The only other zombie example naturally occurring that we know of readily is chronic wasting disease, but that does not exhibit aggression. Not to the degree that we see it in Plague of Madness. The only closest thing that we could find to this is a very common disease that honestly deserves to be called a zombie disease more than all the others. Rabies. <gasps> the symptoms of rabies include fever, headache, excessive salivation, muscle spasms, paralysis, and mental confusion. Here's where it gets more detailed, and even though this is based on symptoms described by people, it seems to affect animals in the same way. So we'll just say host. The host creature will experience excessive pain in the muscles. In its entire body, it will experience dizziness, fatigue, fever, loss of appetite, or malaise. Malaise basically means a general feeling of discomfort, illness, or uneasiness whose cause is kind of difficult to identify what it is. Rabies also affects the host psychologically by causing delirium fear, or hallucination. The host will experience muscle spasms or paralysis with weak muscles, and it will experience on a sensory level pins and needles or sensitivity to light. Here are the other symptoms. Behavioral, aggression or irritability, gastrointestinal, nausea or vomiting. Also common, anxiety, brain death, coma, difficulty swallowing, dilated pupil, drooling, excessive salivation, headache, mental confusion, seizures, or stiff neck. Do these symptoms not sound more like what we've seen in Plague of Madness? Well, now that we've found something that actually lines up more to symptoms we've seen in the dinosaurs in Primal, we can look at what causes it. What causes rabies? The rabies infection is caused by the rabies virus. The virus is spread through the saliva of infected animals. Infected animals can spread the virus by biting another animal or person. In rare cases, rabies can be spread when infected saliva gets into an open wound or the mucous membrane such as the mouth and or eyes. Huh. Oh god, my eyes twitch and I keep remember 28 days later. That's like the only scene I remember out of all of it. Like, I legit don't remember the rest of the movie, but I remember that. But speaking of biting, this is exactly what happened to the Chimarasaurus in Primal. This creature, the poor Parasaurolophus, was behaving confused and delirious and very aggressive, and only when it bit the sauropod is when the sauropod started expressing those symptoms of fatigue, nausea and vomiting, excessive thirst, and eventually stopping eating and drinking altogether, respiratory problems, and aggression, as well as irritability. Dude, the dinosaur had rabies, the scary viral disease that causes inflammation of the brain in humans and other mammals, and the result is nearly always death. By the way, as a side note, the reason why I said that it looked as though it took some time for the Camarasaurus to be affected completely by the disease is because of the transition in that scene after it got bitten. Go ahead and check out the first video with me talking about it. You'll see what I mean if you missed it. An excerpt about rabies mentions this. The time period between contracting the disease and the start of symptoms is usually one to three months, but can vary from less than one week to more than one year. The time depends on the distance the virus must travel travel along peripheral nerves to reach the central nervous system. Since the Camarasaurus is a very large animal, it makes sense that it would take a considerable amount of time, or at least more time than it probably would have taken for smaller animals to exhibit full-blown symptoms. Now here's where things get interesting because the next question is, how exactly did the Parasaurolophus get rabies? I think it's safe to call this kind of illness a virus, and I don't know if you guys realize this, but the eyes of the animals when they're full-blown crazy look almost identical to the Umbrella Corporation logo. To get an idea of where this virus came from or how it originated, we have to look at its real-world counterpart. 
Rabies has been known since around 2000 BC. The first written record of rabies is in the Mesopotamian Codex of Eshnuna, I don't know what that means, but that was circa 1930 BC, which said that the owner of a dog showing symptoms of rabies should take preventative measures against bites. If another person were bitten by a rabid dog and later died, the owner was heavily fined. The virus seems to have originated in the old world and dog cases were mostly reported but although even today most of the cases of rabies seem to be from dogs, wild animals account for 91% of reported cases of rabies from 2017. Bats were the most frequently reported rabid wildlife species, coming at 32.2% of all animal cases during 2017, followed by raccoons at 28.6%, skunks at 21.1%, and foxes at 7%. The reason this is important probably is because the Blood Moon episode in Primal featured whoop de doop de big ass bats. In the Primal universe, it is possible that these guys could be responsible for spreading the disease, especially when you consider how they fed on everything. They were also very aggressive when they had the sickness. I mean, they were already aggressive to begin with, but the sickness among them probably mutated enough to cross species and to affect the dinosaurs and other animals, even though realistically rabies more so affect mammals because that's where they come from. When we saw the Parasaurolophus, it is possible that it could have gotten a nice kiss from those big ass bat dudes and the virus had a mutation that jumped across to reptiles. There's also another scary possibility, that other animals got infected long before the Parasaurolophus. That's my theory for now, guys. I think a lot of you now realize that we've had a zombie virus for the longest while, and it's called rabies, and we can also get it. Stay safe, keep your pets vaccinated, and uh, if you ever get bitten by a wild animal, go to the emergency room immediately to test for rabies. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Altiori. You ask, we answer.